In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get your car back from a reluctant renter. Second time this has happened. Had someone ran the Range Rover, lost a key, 700 bucks for the key. Then they went one day, they went two days late. Now, typically when people get two days late, I really start, I be on them because I know that's, that's usually a sign that the future is not good, right? So we went on and he was supposed to bring the car back last night. No call, no show. And I got called unprofessional because I called the police. Because this is what you're gonna have to do. And I'm gonna explain why you have to do it. Many people are under the assumption that if you rent a car and you don't take it back, the car rental company has to come find you and sue you in court. It's not the case. On the books, it is a law, it's called theft by conversion. Now, what does that mean? Theft by conversion is that someone has your property and you said, I want my property back. And they don't give you your property back. At that moment, they're committing theft by conversion and depending upon the dollar amount, it could be a misdemeanor or it can be a felony. So if they have a car in your car, like this case, this was a $15,000 car. So it would have been a felony. And I'm talking to him, talking to him, talking to him. And when I said, look, you bring the car back by 12 today or I'm calling the police. And he said, I don't do threats. You know, I don't play games with the police. You know, I could just let your car sit. Your car will sit. So he was telling me, I'm not going to bring your car back and I'm not going to pay you. Now, if we got to the point where, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. If we got to the point where we had went to court, that would have been a nail in his coffin. He was actively at that point saying, I am keeping your car and I'm not going to pay you. That's what he said with that text. And I showed it to the cop and the cop called him and explained to him that you could be arrested, you could be prosecuted, and you can go to jail. And all of a sudden, now he's on his way to bring the car back. See, part of this is, I'm gonna explain to you what happened. And you know, he didn't pick up the car at my house. But when he picked up the car, I was driving the drop top Benz. And one of the things that I'm starting to see because essentially, you know, um, it's management, it's communication, because all my texts to him have been professional. You don't want to start cussing or going off on them. And th this is what's so funny. This guy owes me $1,400, and he said it was unprofessional for me to call the police when he sent me a text saying, I could just let your car sit. I ain't gonna bring it back to you. But I'm unprofessional because this is what happened. I He's been compelled to do something he didn't want to do. He didn't want to bring the car back. He didn't want to bring the car back. And, you know, he also said he has $1,400 cash in his pocket. If you got the cash, why didn't you pay your bill? Yeah, 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 yeah. So essentially what you got to do, step number one, when they get two days late. Now, this, this is where it gets kind of sucky. Uh, for the theft for my conversion laws to kick in, they need to be late five days. You know, because if, let's say, they're late two days, and that is, um, like, you know, let's charge it 50 bucks. That's $90 they owe you. That's a misdemeanor. So, essentially, you want to catch them where they're in the felony because the felony is where they can go to jail. Because when that cop, and this is the second time this happened, like I, I'm asking, I'm like, bring the car back, bring the car back. But with the police calling, like you can go to jail, all of a sudden the car magically appears. And one of the things that I'm starting to do, because uh, part of this is uh, with higher car, I can pick and typically the first time this happened happened with someone who had been on the platform 
nine months. And let's see, this guy, well, I'm using this phone. This guy, I don't know how long he's been on there. Now, what's gonna happen to him is, once I file a claim and take the car back, because I guarantee you, he ain't gonna put gas in it. It's gonna need gas. I gotta file a claim for the gas. I'm gonna have to file a claim for the receipts, uh, for the keys. And essentially, this is what you have to do and I'm going to give you a better process because I'm, I'm, I'm redefining my process. But what you have to do is be on them. Now, I got another one. He says he's going to pay tomorrow. Once again, if he doesn't pay tomorrow, I'm calling the police, give him to bring the car back. Because part of the issue is, and what I'm seeing is, I have some of the nicest cars on hire car. And once you go ahead and you're riding around in the road Range Rover and you're doing, everyone knows you're in the Range Rover and you're doing this stuff. And it, it was something weird because he told me the car was in Latonia and he lived in Fayetteville. So that means that someone else has been driving that car. And I'm gonna have this conversation that, hey, don't rent this car for anyone. If anyone else is driving this car and they get in an accident and I don't get reimbursed, I'm going to sue you. And I'm gonna make your life a living hell. Uh, Cause one of the things I was getting ready to do, cause like I said, mentally, I was like, he's got the car, he's probably gonna mess the car up. I was mentally prepared for him messing up the car, I was mentally prepared for him keeping the car, and I was mentally prepared for him getting arrested and mentally prepared for going to court because, uh, I was going to prosecute because of that last little text I got from him. I don't care. I like, okay, you don't care. Fine, fine, fine. No problem. So this is one of the things you have to do to compel someone to give your car back because typically, you know, this is where I'm at, you know, phase one, I'll do a separate video about phase one, but phase one is done. I've, got the cars and now I'm going to do pricing and see which cars are doing better. Um, but this video is for anyone that's on hire car or Turo and you have someone who has kept your car and they don't want to give it back. Get the police involved. Get the police involved. Because if, once again, and you can go ahead and fact check me on this, it's called theft by conversion. And depending upon the dollar amount, it can be a felony. Now, what, what does this mean? That if they get caught, uh, essentially, in the case of a rental car, if you do theft by conversion, what's going to happen is the police are going to put the bolo, be on a lookout for this car. And if he gets caught driving it, they will be arrested as if they had stole the car. So all of that stuff will kick in. They drive the car and you know this car has a temp tag on it so it was just a matter of time before he gets pulled over and once again you they get arrested and then you have to go to court and like do you want to press charges or you want to press charges and when you press charges you're going to have to show up so courts are like a year or two backed up so th this this could be a while but i was prepared to do all of that because what I am seeing is based upon their communication, where their mind is, where their mind is. And there are many people, like the other day I had a girl who wanted me to let her boyfriend pick up the car. And I was like, no, they ain't gonna work. And she said, could you deliver it? And when I said there would be a fee, she got all weird. And she's like, you just want money. You just want money. I'm like, it's a business. And I'm glad I now have this office because I'm at an office park and I got an office um, and I'm, I'm not doing this out of my house. And it is crazy what I'm running into. Now, I will say the majority of my renters are good, decent people. I don't have these kind of problems out of 90 90, 90, 98 percent of them. They rent the car, they pay, they, they don't want to pay, they bring it back. So that's 98 percent of the renters. But every now and then, and I'm get, I'm beginning to see 
the personality. I'm beginning to see who I'm gonna have to have that extra conversation with. Um, I rather got car to a guy who does DoorDash. He's like, man, I make 5,000. Dude was chill, he making money, his booking went through. I don't think I'm gonna have to have that conversation with him. Uh, essentially, I'm gonna have to have a conversation with certain people um, about, look, and also, your messaging. You need to put in your messaging. Once you're too late, days late, just bring the car back. No problem. You know, and essentially what's going to happen is if they are late and they don't pay you, they cannot rent any more cars. Now, this is really, really important. If you have a habitual yard bird, this is someone who does this all the time. They need to be kicked off the platform. They need to be kicked off the platform so they don't do it to another owner because you know, Hire Car is you know really good about this because essentially, I was going to do a video. I was prepared to go to this level. I was going to put out his information on social media, as like be on the lookout and offer a thousand dollar reward. So, I guarantee you that would have got me some action. Thousand dollars, be on the lookout for this car. A uh, thousand bucks to anyone who can report to the police and get this yard bird arrested. Because see. Here's the thing. The people who do this kind of thing don't think that they can get in trouble. They feel that it's a simple civil matter because I actually, it's on this phone, he actually told me it's not a stolen car. And I was like, ha ha, it will be treated as a stolen car. And when the officer explained all this to him, then this is when, you know, because he, he, he's a talker, he's got all these stories apparently he's going through something and one of the things that is um very interesting is how many people want me to act like i'm their friend even though i could not get any favors or situations from them the girl who wanted me to bring the car to her for free uh this guy he's like he's going through something and he's like hey how can i just drop the car off and i was like uber you know, Uber, Uber, have a friend, whatever. I don't know. So essentially, because um, this month is the month to go ahead and find my GPS tracker person. I got to find someone that I can call up and do it the day I get the car. I cannot be waiting four, five, six weeks. I mean, and essentially I want the gps tracker in the kill switch for in the future like they stop paying i just cut the car off and it's like hey man the car won't come off you ain't paid that car will come come back we'll be able to start once you make a payment if you can't make a payment i'm gonna take my spare keys come pick it up so what we're we gonna do and in the future i'm gonna be in that position because so many you know once again this isn't an everyday problem and I think one of the reasons I'm experiencing this problem is I have 20 cars now 20 or 21 I think I have 20 I have 21 cars and I've put out a lot of cars on the platform I rented to a lot of people and I made a lot of mistakes like renting from the house that was a big 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 mistake and then two because like I said the majority of my renters are decent, kind, normal, nice people. That's 98% of them. Every now and then you will get a yard bird. So I'm gonna have these conversations and I'm like, look, you get two days behind, just bring it back. I'm not gonna, you know, because essentially you don't wanna have this, what I call hostile opening messaging on your listings. Like, hey, if you do this, I'm gonna prosecute you. You don't wanna do that. Because that message, because you're speaking to everyone, but you only have to have that conversation with a few people. So that's where we are with that. But yeah, two times this has happened. And once I got the police involved, all of a sudden the car shows up, which means that they could have brought that car back once I asked. Once, once again, the thing is they don't think there's nothing that's going to happen to them. That's the big issue. They don't think there's nothing gonna happen to them. They think it's a civil matter where you gotta sue them in court and all this other stuff. And that ain't the case. They can go to jail, they can be prosecuted and they get a get a criminal record 
for keeping your rental car longer than they should without paying you. You know, it, 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 it's just funny because he's like, I got 1400. I'm like, dude, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you had the money, you would have paid and we wouldn't be here. That that's was one of the things, you know, and I'm beginning, like I said, I'm beginning to see the, the personality because this guy and the chick had a similar personality, very similar personality and part signs of the personality are overly familiar when they don't know you. That's typically because these people are used to taking liberties and they don't know what boundaries are. So they will overly, they're overly familiar because he would call me up. He'd say, you know, like 7.30 last night. Yeah, I do that around 7.30. I was like, okay. And the fact that at 7.30 came, 7.30 passed, no call, no text, nothing. That's massive disrespect. And when someone treats you like that, you got to show them who you are. Because, you know, I'm real low-key, mellow. You know, I don't look like I get down like I can get down. I don't look like that. And that's something that people found out on the storage auction trail. But essentially, this is what you have to do. You know, once again, governing your state's laws and um, knowing what your state laws are. Because wherever you are, Google your statute of theft by conversion for your state. In the state of Georgia, if they take a rental car and they don't pay you, you can put a police report on them and the car will be treated as a stolen car, which means if they're driving and they get pulled over, they're getting arrested. And the car would be towed and that's going to be impound fees and all this other crap. So essentially, you know, because one of the things is I don't know if the police will get the key off of them because if they don't get the key off of them and the car gets impounded, I would have to have my key guy meet me at the vehicle to make a key. Because to see, you can't make a key for these new vehicles without the vehicle. So that would be having him meet me there if he can, because essentially uh, they can't, the key guys typically can't make keys for 2018 and newer because uh, that software hasn't hit the aftermarket yet. So essentially I was prepared for all of that hassle because this is one of the things, because you many people say that, you know, this is, for the most part, it's kind of passive, but when you have something like this that happens, um, essentially it's not passive. It's very active because it's Sunday and I'm dealing with this crap and essentially once I see that behavior, I'm on the lookout for that behavior. And I'm like, look, let me talk to you. Like, and essentially I'm going to be like, hey, you know, thanks for renting the car, everything. Let's have this conversation. If you get like two days late, just bring the car back. I'm not going to beat you. I'm not, you know, because essentially that's the danger zone. Typically when they get two days late, two days late can turn to four in a heartbeat. Four can turn to six in a heartbeat. And essentially, we didn't go 10 days this time because I was on him, we went six days, six days. So the next time, and yes, there will be another time, you know, uh, cause essentially uh, once I get my GPS guy and kill switches in, this is going to solve a lot of this. But until we get to there, more than likely, this is probably gonna happen once or twice more, but I'm developing a system once you're two days, like I got a girl, she was late now. I sent her, I hit her up three times in one day. It's like, look, you know, if you can't pay, just bring it back instantly. Let's, let's just have that conversation now. And that's not, I have it on day five because of day five, because typically when people fall really, really far behind, they typically never catch back up. That's been my experience. So the issue isn't to let them get that far. So the first time this happened was 10 days. This was six days. And like I said, if I hadn't been proactive, we, we would be at 10 or 15 days. I can tell, I can tell. So the next time this happened, I'm probably gonna get my car back in two or three days because now I've developed a methodology, a system of programming. And it's very important that you communicate professionally with the renter because essentially 
I was, you know, just being, you know, no cussing, no going off and stuff. And because the cop was like, could you show me the text messages? And boom, boom, boom. Because essentially I could show her the messages and essentially where that line where I could just let your car sit. She was like, oh, that would have been the nail in his coffin because um, he was at that point saying, I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to bring your car back. I'm actively doing that. It is a willful act. Willful acts is what get people locked up in jail every day of the week. So this is how you get your car back on tour or hire car. Essentially, once again, once they start getting like two days late, two days, uh, typically I start on them when they're one day late, one day late. I'm like, hey, you're one day late. Are you bringing it back or are you extending? And I will hit them up with two or three messages that day. Because you want to solve the problem before it grows into a longer problem. Because if they get it in their head that, hey, you know, they can be late and you're not going to harass them. Because this guy was like, you know, you're blowing up my phone because you owe me money, man. It's it's crazy. It, it's, it's really crazy. But that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.